we've come into the centre of Basra. They're free to go. <laughs> when you fly over the country, what's striking is just how much green space there still is. Scientists here say the summers are getting hotter. Then they were given strong drink and drugs and put under pressure by the use of violence. Most of the fires are out, but there's a fear that the smouldering hillsides could easily flare up again. Everything within a mile of the sea has been destroyed. Are you preparing to do a deal with the Tories? Absolutely not. The streets, there's only a nasty There's, there's one the local authority, authority the Conservatives have wanted to put on. gone. Ministers say the offer is one of the most generous in the public sector. Well, Mike Sargent is in Eastleigh for us now. Mike, is this going to be the first of more strikes? Well, Fiona, they're certainly not ruling out further action. Firefighters here now back on duty and ready to respond to emergencies. <laughs> Sandra has just lost a legal battle against eviction. At court, she was told she had just two weeks to leave. I mean, I, I knew that was going to happen, but it's just... The children of Baghdad. Many have witnessed extreme violence. Some have lost close family members. Now they're living with the effects. The ghostly shape of the Ark Royal came through the freezing Portsmouth fog, a poignant final homecoming for the Royal Navy's flagship. The Union will meet tomorrow to consider the next steps in this dispute and whether firefighters have the appetite for another walkout. Well, Mike, who's been looking at these in detail, is with me now to talk a little more about the themes, Mike. So this will be her last Christmas living at this address. Sandra, who has a five-year-old son, used to work in recruitment and has been a much-praised community volunteer. But housing benefit won't now stretch to a similar property. Two years ago, there were 25 attacks a day in this area of Baghdad. Now that's down to about one a day on average. The Iraqi security forces are much more capable, much more confident, but they still operate with a lot of American support. The Harriers that used to take off from this flight deck are gone. And for most of the next decade, Britain won't be able to launch fast jets at sea. Whereas these figures on their own do look quite striking, if you put them in an international context, that seven and a half million figure and the rise that we've seen does not look that unusual. 20 years ago, there were thousands sleeping rough in our cities. But on an evening shift with the charity Thames Reach, we only found a few. Many now come from abroad and often have very specific personal problems. Is it because of the drugs that you're here? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. At the beginning of last week, there were lots of empty seats on the Liberal Democrat battle bus. Now it's rammed most of the time. So on Sunday, you said that you wouldn't support Labour if they came third. Yesterday, it was all about Gordon Brown. Today, you're not ruling anything out. Which is it? <laughs> I think it's really very straightforward. During this campaign, he's been whisked around the country like a cabinet minister. So will he soon be one? Morning, Nick. Morning. Are you preparing to do a deal with the Tories? Absolutely not. Surge in popularity for you, but you're still eating peanuts for lunch. Yeah, I, <laughs> I saw like a pick up at, at Cardiff Station. You said you'd support the man on the moon if he'd deliver your priorities, but you wouldn't support Gordon Brown if he came third. I said that I would work with anybody. His opponents are confident they can burst Clegg's bubble and expose his policies in time for election day. But on the hung parliament, it seems to be an inconsistent and no, somewhat confusing it's, message. It's, People it's, can't work out where you stand. Do you support Gordon Brown under any circumstances or not? It's an extraordinarily simple message. Many people say they still support Moqtada al-Sada. The Shiite cleric hasn't been seen here for many years. The battles which scarred Sada city left his Mahdi army much diminished. This is potentially still a very dangerous place for American soldiers. Nobody's quite sure whether the militias have disappeared altogether or are simply hiding, waiting to fight another day.